With a reported GDP of $376 billion, Norway stands as the 27th richest country out of 195. While this is an impressive feat, it's interesting to note that the Scandinavian nation is one of the smallest countries by land area, with a fairly lower population of 5,474,360. Countries with a higher GDP than Norway rely either on their massive size or their massive population. Norway doesn't have either. What it does have, however, are resources and strategies to make sure that the Norwegian people never run out of this seemingly infinite supply of resources. The Norwegian people didn't get where they are today without a history marked with trial and error. It's crazy to think that Norway was once considered one of the poorest countries on the globe. Norway, like most countries in Europe, was once under Danish control. The period of Danish rule, however, has been documented in Norwegian history as the 400-year night. This was largely because the Danes would redirect any of the resources and income generated from Norway to Copenhagen. It didn't help that Sweden had broken free from Danish control and were on their way to building an empire that matched theirs. One of the ways they could guarantee a stronghold of Europe over the Danes was by taking over Norway. So for a large part of its history, the Norwegian people and their land were treated as patsy. As a result, Norway doesn't have a blooming history to look back on. Their land was consistently under military control, their people were poor and uneducated, and their homes were underdeveloped. It didn't help much that Norway had one of the harshest climates in the region. Half of the country was covered in snow and half of it was shrouded in darkness. The average Norwegian household depended on either fishing or agriculture to sustain itself. Due to the harsh climate and underdeveloped resources, Norway faced quite a few famines over the years, reducing its nominal population even further. So at one point in history, it truly seemed like the Norwegian people were on the brink of losing their homeland. Fast forward to 2023 and the Norwegian people are ranked as the seventh happiest globally. What changed? Years of struggle and resistance arguably evoked a sense of nationalism in the Norwegian people. When it came to establish its own parliamentary system, higher ups in the country made sure that the rights of every individual in the country, from the farmers to the traders, were safeguarded. Norway didn't have much and, at its independence, it was a country on the brink of bankruptcy. The average Norwegian didn't have access to the quality education that was provided in southern European nations. What they did have, however, was years of expertise. The European nation is surrounded by the sea and most Norwegians capitalized on the geography to enter the merchant navy trade. Parliament saw the merchant navy as Norway's general lifeboat. They were willing to focus and redirect their meager resources to that sector and it eventually paid off. Even though Norway was an independent state, foreign companies still controlled a major share of the country's hydropower systems. Again, years of living under the Danes and battling with the Swedes had hardened the Norwegian people against foreign forces. The parliament passed a bill that made it nearly impossible for foreigners to own major companies in Norway. All the while, the merchant navy was opening up Norway's horizons. There was a free flow of knowledge and information, and the Norwegian people finally had access to the most up-to-date technology in Europe. Concurrently, Norway was evolving its existing timber industry. Access to technology enabled Norwegian labourers to develop their timber industry and make good use of Norway's forestation. Timber became a vital export commodity, fueling economic development. In the mid-20th century, Norway's timber industry experienced a peak in production, with annual exports exceeding 10 million cubic meters of timber and related products. The Norwegian people had a sense of solidarity and nationalism unlike any other. This, of course, benefited the country's economy as a whole, and Norway was able to claim a decent footing in the world economy in the 20th century. Before the First World War, Norway had a GDP growth rate of 3.3% per annum. It was one of the highest in Europe. All the while, the country wasn't even aware that it was sitting on a massive natural resource reserve. Do you know about the infamous oil curse? A handful of the world's nations control over 80% of the world's natural gas and oil reserves. Yet ironically, these nations only make up 7.9% of the world's gross revenue. Here's an example. Venezuela has a fifth of the world's oil supply, yet it is ranked as one of the poorest countries in the world. There are exceptions to the rule. Of course, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait and the United Arab Emirates have vast oil reserves and are likewise considered among the richest countries in the world. They rank much higher than Norway in terms of GDP, but that's just one factor for determining how rich a country really is. 
To better understand this, between 2 to 4 million people in Saudi Arabia live below the poverty line. In contrast, extreme poverty is almost non-existent in Norway. In 2014, only 0.5% of the population was reportedly living below the poverty line, and their population was mostly concentrated in Oslo, where there's a higher immigrant population. So, GDP isn't the only factor for determining wealth. Countries such as Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates might have higher GDPs, but they've been accused of horrific human rights abuses. Circling back to the oil curse, countries where the economy is heavily dependent on the export of oil see an unusual shift in their fortunes and revenue. They're given an exuberant amount of money to sustain the Natural Resources Department, which means they virtually ignore every other sector. The strength of a nation's currency invariably depends on its gross product, and the oil sector alone isn't enough to sustain a country's purchasing power. In the end, despite an abundance of oil, some countries see their currencies dip with inflation taking over. They then become reliant on other nations for aid and support, all the while still having liquid gold. But then we have Norway, a country that does have a considerable supply of oil, yet it didn't fall victim to the oil curse. How did that happen? Things were going well for Norway and the country was slowly but surely catching up to its neighbours. Their development, however, came to a halt sometime during the World War when Germany seized control of it. Norway was plundered for five years under German rule and the country's thriving merchant navy fleet suffered. Democratic independence was eventually restored and Norway had to rebuild everything once again. It's not like they hadn't done it before. However, this time around, the Norwegian people had a bit of an economic boost thanks to its natural resources. The discovery of oil under the North Sea was a godsend for the people of Europe. It did come with the hassle of having to establish landmarks in international waters. Still, Norway stuck its claim over a portion of the Red Sea and allowed Philips Petroleum to start digging. What's interesting here is that Philips was on its way to packing up and quitting before it struck black gold in 1969. They'd been drilling and drilling for years with no results. In 1969, they decided to go deeper one last time. That's when they discovered a vast oil reserve, and that's when Norway saw its fortunes turn for the better. Now to answer the question, how did Norway escape the oil curse? You have to remember that the Norwegian people were fiercely loyal to one another. While other nations saw one or two officials benefiting from black gold, Norway functioned as an entire unit. One single person wasn't going to benefit from Norway's oil reserve. It was all or none. The Norwegian government also made sure that the money generated from the oil supply was funneled back into the economy. Just like they'd done with hydropower, the Norwegian government announced that foreign companies would not be given a share in Norway's natural reserves. Foreign companies were, however, allowed to drill and have some share of the profit, but the majority would be retained by Norway. In addition, these companies would have to exclusively hire Norwegian people. This created a whole host of new jobs for the Norwegian people. This isn't to say that things were always smooth sailing for Norway's oil industry. The Norwegian government made it so the oil trade would only boost Norway's economy and not replace it entirely, but it did depend on it to sustain a significant portion of the economy. The maritime industry remained a cornerstone of the Norwegian economy, with Norway boasting the world's largest registered fleet, exceeding 10% of global tonnage. This industry contributes significantly, representing around 9% of Norway's GDP and providing employment for over 110,000 individuals. When the oil recession happened in the 80s, economic growth in Norway was almost stagnant. There was a huge downturn from the 3.3% annual growth rate it had witnessed after gaining independence from the Germans. This is how Norway was able to evade the oil curse. The country got a wake-up call earlier on in its oil trade and oil sector expansion, and it allowed Norway to focus on other means of generating revenue, such as hedge funds. Norway's sovereign wealth fund, officially named the Government Pension Fund Global, has not only solidified Norway's economic standing, but also serves as a model for other nations seeking to manage their resource wealth effectively. The Norwegian government established the GPFG in 1990, with the foresight that oil reserves would eventually decline, necessitating the creation of a fund to secure the nation's long-term economic stability. Managed by Norges Bank Investment Management, the fund follows a diversified investment strategy across various asset classes, including stocks, bonds, and real estate. This strategy aims to optimize returns while mitigating risks, ensuring sustainable growth over the long term. One of the key pillars of Norway's Sovereign Wealth Fund is its commitment to ethical investment practices. The fund operates under stringent guidelines that exclude companies involved in activities deemed incompatible with Norway's values, such as tobacco production and certain weapons manufacturing. 
Moreover, the fund integrates environmental, social and governance criteria into its investment decisions, reflecting a broader commitment to responsible investing. Given its substantial size, exceeding one trillion US dollars, the fund commands considerable influence in global finance markets. Its investment decisions can sway asset prices and market dynamics, underscoring its significance on the international stage. Like Norway, Nigeria possesses significant oil reserves, which could be utilized to establish a sovereign wealth fund. However, political instability, corruption and mismanagement have hindered Nigeria's efforts to establish a successful fund. Countries such as Venezuela and Angola have struggled to establish and maintain sovereign wealth funds despite possessing vast natural resource wealth. Political instability, economic mismanagement and corruption have hampered efforts to effectively manage and allocate revenues from oil and other natural resources into long-term investment vehicles. Even in countries where sovereign wealth funds have been established, such as Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, challenges persist. These challenges include over-reliance on oil revenues, lack of investment diversification and limited transparency and accountability in fund management. In all, Norway managed to evade the infamous curse by doing something other oil-bearing nations didn't – leveraging. The country managed to overturn its fortunes and then multiply them three times over just by being smart with the money generated from the oil sector. Of course, this wouldn't have been possible if the Norwegian public didn't have a strong sense of nationalism and unity. The country made sure that everyone stood firm and together in the face of adversities, and then everyone benefited when Norway's economy boomed. That's all for this video. What do you think about the oil curse? Let us know in the comments below.